Good evening, everyone. Good evening. You don't see me too often at the podium because Shannon uh, Thomas, our president, is here most of the time. Uh, my name is Jacqueline Cannon. I'm the vice president of the association for those that may be attending per, uh, their first time meeting tonight or may not uh, know me uh, personally. Um, I am going to uh, go ahead and kick off the meeting and get it started in the interest of time. Um, so we've got a few things on the agenda this evening. We wanted to keep it rather light and um, uh, sociable this evening, considering this is the last meeting of our official calendar uh, year. Um, our next general body meeting is not until uh, excuse me, September, September 10th, I believe it's on the, uh, on the agendas for tonight. If you haven't received a copy of the agenda, they are on the uh, table as you come into the, into the fellowship hall. Um, I want to thank everybody for attending this evening. And in, in uh, Shannon's absence, I want to review, or at least one of the things that we realized just today, to be honest with you, that um, we had not done in the May meeting was do a recap of all of the, um, the events and activities and give you an update or a state of the Penn Branch Citizen Civic Association for the year. That's a requirement uh, by our bylaws that we did not do in, in May. So I'd like to uh, make a motion that we review some of the some of those activities now. Just to recap for those that may not have made all the meetings this year or that may not be familiar with some of the activities that we that we um, sponsored and, and hosted for the community this year. So second motion is second. Seconded. So just in, in recap, we started the year with some pretty lofty goals to um, uh, uh, expand our membership list to to get more in touch, kind of boots on the ground with the community, and um, uh, we're coming as a new administration, and just wanted to make establish a presence with get to know our neighbors and reach out and kind of um, uh, fix itself from some of the wounds that have been festering in the neighborhood, as well as get in touch with with some of the, the local facilities and organizations and, and things that are right here in our in our neighborhood. And to that to that end, I just want to kind of highlight some of the some of the things that we've uh, that we covered this past year. Most people got to put their glasses on to see. I got to take mine off to see this. Place, so. Um, so starting first last uh, last summer in August, we hosted a very successful uh, community day thanks to. Um, Ms. Tawana Banks, who I don't see in the room yet this evening, but she did an awesome job of, of not only growing the attendance, but also growing the number of vendors and uh, city uh, 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 representatives that we, that we had in attendance. So thanks again to Tawana for that successful event. And she's in great preparation now to uh, host another event, a community day for the for the uh, community in August. I believe the date is August 17th. August 17th. There is no rain date, so please, everyone, let's pray for sunshine and, and come out and support the event. Um, we appreciate the, the partnership with Jared Lynch and the O Street Friends and Neighbors. We um, uh, are receiving regular updates, progress updates on the development of the, the shops at Penn Branch uh, Shopping Center directly from Anthony Stark, who's the project manager of, of that event. And I would say that um, I'm, I'm, I'm liking the progress that we're seeing as the, the structure changes and, and uh, development continues. So let's pray that uh, it finishes on time and, and we get some, get all the scores and, and businesses there that, uh, that the community wants. We also co-hosted, and thanks to our President Shannon Thomas for leading that effort with the local uh, association presidents, but she co we co-hosted a Ward 7 candidate forum uh, back in November of last year, where all of the, the candidates um, that were on the ballot had an opportunity to, to speak and present their platforms and, and um, uh, ideas to the, to the community. We introduced new uh, Penn Branch Citizen Civic Association membership cards to the community. Uh, if, you haven't if, you, if you're a paying member of the association and you have not received your new membership cards, please either see um, Brother Stan Benton, who's the captain of our block captains, or um, any one of the, uh, the board members, and we can direct you to your block captain to, uh, to receive those. Um, we've, we've also been working very hard on increasing our membership. 
I don't think we meet, we've actually met our, our membership goal of increasing it by, by about 25%. But please, you, hopefully those of you that are here are members and you can see and after hearing the rest of our conference for the year, you um, can see where your, 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 your funding is going, your dollars are going, all of the, the great speakers that we bring in to provide us with rich information and uh, see value in, in, in joining the, the association and becoming a member. We've also reinstated uh, the monthly newsletter and is back in circulation now, thanks to our, our newsletter team, Ms. Um, Elsa Nash and Laverne Thomas for spearheading that whole effort for us, and, and uh, Ms. Alberta Paul, thank you very much and all of our block captions for distributing those newsletters for us on, on a timely basis. Um, we also provided, and thanks to, to uh, Ms. Paul again for providing succinct and successful testimony at the hearing for the property that was up for sale on O Street, and um, through her diligence and the, the uh, legislative, uh, some, some of the legislative members on the uh, in the, the community that resulted in a no bid decision by uh, the DC government for that particular property. So thank you for, uh, for your diligence and hard work in that. We also submitted um, letters on behalf, letters of concern from our neighbors on behalf of, um, on behalf of our, our, our neighbors, I'm sorry, I repeat that. We submitted letters of concern from our neighbors in regards to the ANC 7004 commissioner challenge that was raised. Um, I actually testified at the D.C. Board of Elections hearing um, a couple of weeks ago now, and um, we're at, since I'm up here now, I'm on the agenda to provide an update for that. I'll just go ahead and give that update now, that the D.C. Board of Elections is still, they, they've not rendered a decision um, in that case yet, and are uh, waiting to get the uh, transcript so they can make that decision, and hopefully uh, within a few days, I'm told they will post the results on their website um, uh, for everyone to to uh, be updated on that. We've also provided a oh um, kudos to our our recording secretary um, Kyle Murphy. He's been very successful at engaging us with the Latham and Watkins attorneys at law to provide us pro bono work for. Uh, rewriting, our, rewriting and updating our bylaws, and also providing us with some organizational go governance for uh, uh, implementing a little bit more structure within the within the association. Will be uh, well. I won't steal Kyle Sunder, but he'll he'll give you more of an update on that as as we move forward in the program. And we've also have a rich set of speakers um, that we've engaged and have presented to the community in one fashion or another. And I want to recognize our our. Uh, President Shannon Thomas that just uh, arrived. So if you want to, if you want me to, want to pick up from here, Shannon, and um, uh, just highlight uh, some of the, the speakers, or if you want me to continue, I'll I'll do that as well. Oh, you did. Okay. Shannon Thomas, everyone. Thank you. Sorry, uh, mommy duties, Paul. <laughs> um, so overall this year, um, we were able to get a lot of uh, guest speakers to come in and speak to the community that we were very proud about. Um, some included uh, Verizon representative, um, Align Development, Stephanie Reiser, who talked about her art project. Um, also, Ward 7 candidates of uh, Elisa Silverman and Rustin Lewis also came as well. Anita Bonds, um, at large council member, representatives from Planet Fitness who um, also were ex excited to create a relationship with our community and encourage us to come and work out. Um, we also had principal and vice principal of Ann Bears Elementary School come and talk with the community. We also had John F. Cotton from the Board of Directors um, from the Fort DuPont Ice Arena, which is a great asset to our community and something that everyone should visit at some point. 
Um, we also have Brittany Lacey and Alexis Wade, representatives from Francis Gregory Library, come and speak um, about their chess club, their uh, book readings for children, and various different activities that they have throughout the year. We also had Claire Balstein, Vice Principal from Bard Early College, which is a school that we really want in our community in Ward 7 that will be a preparatory school to allow students to get college credits um, and they will be able to graduate within a high school term with an associate's degree. So that's definitely something that we want to come to our community. We also had representatives from Forest Bathing, um, and they're actually having an event this Saturday um, that we definitely want the community to continuously support them. Um, Casey Trees, um, they have gifted us numerous trees throughout our community. We had Dr. Lewis Freeby, the Chancellor of DC um, Public Schools, actually come and talk. We had Unique Morris Hughes, the Director of the De um, Department of Employment Services, come and speak to our community as well. We actu actually had a resident of our community who is a doctor, uh, Dr. Jalon Burton, who came and actually gave us very informative information about pediatrics care and things that were very helpful to new parents within our community. And she's even um, starting a home care uh, center within our neighborhood. So that's an asset to us. So these were some of the fantastic accomplishments and people that we had um, come and speak to our community. Um, and we also had various events and things. Did you already go to the forum? Okay. So I, I don't want to re repeat things. Um, and hopefully next year um, we're able to bring even more people to the community. And we actually want to hear a lot from our young and old residents of people that you want to hear come, um, that you may want them to come speak. So if you have any ideas or suggestions, we're definitely here to hear those um, suggestions. I had printed out something that I wanted to share with the community, um, but I can't find my paper. Um, I know the city is starting a new program where they are doing taxi rides to the local um, metro stations. Um, and to my understanding, this program is supposed to be free. And I think because um, programs like Uber and Lyft have kind of dominated the scene right now. Um, they're trying to get more traction and, and, and attention back to, I guess, maybe our DC taxi drivers. Um, so this is a great, um, uh, uh, I guess, program of sorts to take advantage of. So if you need to get back and forth or to and from, Ms. Pauls, do you have the number for that or any further information on that program by any chance? Um, I know the mayor put out um, something about providing ride with DC, ta um, DC taxis to and from the local metro stations and so forth for free within DC for Ward 7 and 8. They, they have to be seniors. Okay. They have to call the Office of Aging and sign up via Office of Aging. They will mail them a car that they, and on that card is the phone number that they're to call 24 hours before they need the ride. Um, and they will come, but when they, the driver comes, he's going to look for that card. That's sort of like your ID, like your Medicare card. But you have to be 60 plus to, to take advantage of it. Currently, the, the circulator is free for all residents. Okay, and I know that DPW is also doing an event for kids on Saturday, and is it at the DC Armory? Yes. I also wanted to share that information as well. It will allow the kids to get in different public works trucks and vehicles, and just a fun day. They're also providing lunch and food and activities for them to do, so I thought that was something else cool to share with the community that's happening on Saturday. Um, yes, and you just go to their web page, www.dpw.dc.gov, www.dpw.dc.gov, it's on their front page.
Okay, so now um, that we have gone through our timeline of positive things that we have done throughout the year, uh, Jacqueline, do you want to get up and do the CCBO? Okay. The first part of the CPO. They're not here. Okay. Those are the police persons. He has his report. Okay, so instead we'll skip around. We're going to go ahead into our crime report and let you. I'm sorry, can you remind me of that? Because you know I'm, I'm used to Lieutenant, uh, <laughs> Lieutenant James. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Good evening. As you all know, as some of you know, Lieutenant Jameson has retired a couple weeks ago. Okay, he retired. Uh, he may come back at the end of the summer as a senior police official. <laughs> I retired last year. I, came back. I retired last June and came back in September. So I did 28 years out here in this community, okay, and I'm back. But I'm not in the same role. I'm not doing a patrol. I'm doing that to the young guys. They can jump the fences. And I'm dealing more closely knit with the, with the community. Okay. So today, thank you. So today I want to give you the crime stats. My name is Senior Officer Mark Merrill. I've been assigned to the 6th District. Now I'm in my 29th year. Okay. So I'm very aware of what's going on in your community. This is the crime stats. I am tasked now with dealing with, I'm at the substation and I'm dealing with all three patrol service areas. 605, 606, and 607. So I'm doing a lot of the community meetings and ANC meetings throughout those three uh, patrol service areas. So with that, I'm fully aware of the concern and what's going on in the 6th District as a whole and at the substation. From Good Hope Road all the way over to Minnesota and Eli, and Eli, everything that encompasses the 6th District substation. Okay. So with that, in patrol service area 605, the last 30-day crime statistics are we had zero homicides, we had zero sex abuse cases, we had zero robberies excluding gun, we had zero, zero robberies with a gun, we had three assault with dangerous weapons excluding gun, and we had one assault with dangerous weapon gun, which was a total of four violent crimes in the last 30 days. Last year, the same time frame, we had three, so we're up one. We had two burglaries, nine thefts, 16 theft from autos, 11 stolen autos, zero arsons. For a total of property crimes, it's 38. A year ago, the same time frame, we was at 36. And total crimes is 42. And a year ago, we were at 39. Okay, so that's for the last 30 days. Any questions so far? Yes, ma'am. There's been a lot of uh, kind of like undercover raids in our community. Um, Where? Right at the corner. One, one week it was at the corner of O and Carpenter. Mm -hmm. But it didn't seem to be D.C. police. It, it looked like ATF. So I was wondering, do they report that information back to the police? Yes, they actually report it to Commander Habibullah. They do report that. We ask for more help. Right. For Because we are... Short staff. Um, we, uh, the commander has done a realignment of personnel. It didn't work out so well. We're losing officers at a high rate. Um, due to, one was due to the mobility program. The mobility program was set up for officers that had a lot of time on, that was at one police station for a long time. So the chief started a mobility program, which means if you had three or more years on the job, you can shift around and go to another police precinct. Okay, but they had to stop that. A lot of officers was leaving the 6th and 7th district because they were tired. We are the most work in the entire city on this side of the river, believe it or not. We got officers in Georgetown that's been there 20 years, haven't seen the multitude of work that happens on this side of the river. So they was giving officers an opportunity to shift around everything like that, but due to the heavy recruiting of new recruits from out of state, a 
lot of the guys are going back where they're from, where they, where they grew up at. So they are coming here to get the job for a couple of years, and then they leave. And they go back home to be the police. So that kind of hurts our numbers you know, with that. So that's why we had a program we have now, which is this senior officer program, which they allow us to retire but come back up to a five-year period. Yes. Okay. Any questions? Concerns? Anything we need to know about? Yes, ma'am. Why do we uh, talk to the more uh, graduates, the black graduates, to work the district instead of recruiting them from out, out of the district? Actually, our recruiting units, they're very aware of what's going on. They're going to the schools. We do have our program for the uh, young people that's still in high school. We do have a cadet program that's up and running. So that is recruiting the homegrown people that live here, and they, they do help them get uh, college credits, because you have to have 60 college credits to join by, the, by your 21st birthday. So they do help them with that and, and everything. So they do have it up and running. The program is up and running. That's good. We need more faces. Yes. And to deal with the fine that we have here, you know, and the way that we deal with it the way the out-of-state ones deal with us. Yes, ma'am. Our young, our young black males. Mm -hmm. Any other concerns? So we are working diligently in your community with the summer crime initiative that we have in place. Uh, the commander, like I said, she has asked for more help from our support units, from the drug units, our prostitution units, and also federal help. So we do get uh, our MPD and FBI task force, you will see them in your neighborhoods doing five bus operations, those who have high drug issues. Uh, also, uh, uh, but we are still looking at these stats, and you've all been knowing this because I'm sure Lieutenant Jamerson has mentioned it. We're leaving, still leaving too many items in our cars. That's why our theft model numbers are high, and our stolen model numbers are high also. And thefts, the thefts is usually coming from the, uh, it's slowed up a little, but the theft of packages um, that the UPS are leaving at our doorsteps. Those are still up. They have dropped tremendously, but it's still up. So we, um, we're trying to come up with ways. Um, if we can come up with the flyers that's, that we need, you may see a flyer on your car windshield stating if an officer while on patrol sees items in your vehicle, uh, book bags, uh, laptop bags, they're going to leave a notice on your, your windshield saying, please put that away, take it in the house with you, put it in the trunk of your car or something like that, because those items are being stolen at a very high rate across the city. So if you see a, a sticker, it might be pink, don't think it's a ticket, <laughs> it's just to get your attention, saying something was left noticeable and visible in your car. How, how yes, effective has the, um, camp, has the camera program been in, in Ward 7? Has it, has, has it, it's helped us a lot. It's been utilized. Uh, the chief has been uh, pleased with the results from it. Uh, and, and people have been cooperating with us, with uh, looking at the footage. Because we will not send uniform officers to your house. If, we see, if a crime happened in, in your block, we see cameras that may have captured the footage. The officer would note it in the notes for a plans closed detective to go to the house later, not the same day, to try to retrieve the footage, but it's been working on. Any other questions? Concerns? What, what can we do as a community to draw attention to the resources that we need as far as more cops, police, I mean, a lot of uh, a letter to someone, a recommendation, anything pointing us in the right direction. Um, because it seemed like it's falling on deaf ears that, and especially during the summer season, our crime tends to go up. So we want to get ahead of that instead of just sitting back and doing nothing. Email Chief Peter Newsham and blow his email up. With a lot of emails. Let him know. He's, he's, he's a, he's a Good chief. He started off in the 6th District. 
So he knows, he's very aware of what goes on in the 6th District, because he still like to call us his baby, his home, because he started his career off. He actually trained me in the drug unit at the 6th District 100 years ago. So, um, I just asked him as a community, what can we do to get ahead of uh, addressing the issue of not having the support or resources that we need within our community to have enough cops or coverage in Ward 7? So who could we send letters to? Who could we reach out to? Because this seems like it's continuous continuously falling on deaf ears. You know, this is the same thing we hear month after month that cops are leaving from Ward 7 and we're not retaining them. And I don't even understand why there isn't a plan in place to have a certain amount of cops in each ward instead of just allowing it to be top heavy in one ward versus another. That just doesn't even make sense to me. Yeah, so that the chief of police is in charge of placement of recruits once they graduate. Mm -hmm. How many is going to go where to each district? So, as I said, Peter Lucian. Peter Dot Lucian at DC.gov. Dot Lucian. The Lucian of the N E W S H A M. Yes. Uh, now that we've decriminalized uh, marijuana possession, uh, what kind of um, activity do you find? Are people using it as intended by the law? <laughs> Most of them. We, we're doing a lot of education, educating more so than arrest, because we're not going to arrest our way out of that situation. So if we find people that are trying to use it on public space, we will stop them and advise them and just try to educate them. They can't do it on public space. And, and we, we have a, um, there's a little card with the rules on it, and officers try to hand it out. So, but for the most part, yes. Some people who are using it legitimately in their homes are still like creating kind of this, um, you know, contact Yes. Yes. No. No. We don't. We, we get a lot of complaints from the apartment complexes that people are using it in homes. It's coming through some of the other people's uh, vents, and nothing we can do with that until city council decides to change some things with that. There's nothing we can do. I'm just curious. And they get ready to just try to just go put a hit on us. Passing these laws that encourage criminal activity. So I, I think as a community, we should do what Shannon just suggested and, and we all send the emails. But I think that we should. I said I agree with our president that we all should send an email to our, the, the police chief and ask pointed questions. How many? cadets are currently in training. When do you anticipate that they are going to be coming out? And of that number, how many are you assigning to our community? And the he talked about the other collaborations that Habibula has done. Can he support her more and get, we used to have the, uh, the uh, US Park Police to patrol in the summer to help 6th District. Could he work that deal again so that we can have that to support, back back and support MPD until we get our numbers up? And last but not least, I, I would like to motion that we write a letter against the council passing a law to make prostitution legal. The health department is complaining that it's going to increase health costs in the district. The police department is complaining against it because it's going to overtax them. And we need to get rid of the at-large council member that's pushing it, Mr. Grasso. And I have said that to him in his face. Grasso pushed the marijuana, got it passed. 
He's now pushing prostitution. It's time for him to go. Okay, thank you for your time. Okay, Stan is now going to come up um, and present our presentation. I know. We'll work it out. Well, hello. Good evening, everybody. How y'all doing? Good. 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 Excuse me, I have the honor of acknowledging and handing out outstanding certificates tonight for uh, for a long time black captains that are in our, in our presence. But, you know, if they retired every day, they are done. It's nice, 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 nice weather out there, and they are, they are not here today, so I'll just acknowledge them. We have uh, Patricia Carter, she was there for 25 years, uh, black captain for the third three-hour block of Highwood. Callie Steen was 25 years, the third three-hour block of Highwood. And Carter Norris was a black captain for 1638th Street for 40 years. 40. I, I didn't think that I heard, I heard that tonight. 40 years. I did not know this. Yes. Yeah, so we'll be helping up a little, a little certificate. And for the uh, new black captains, I have a new black captain on 32 Heart Block of Highwood. That's Sarah Bunn. And for the 32 Heart Block of Polk Street, hope you don't mind me, is uh, Dr. Cecily Hampton. Did I get that right? Cecily. Cecily. Thank you, thank you. Welcome. Yes, sir. Yeah, uh, I just want to say yeah, uh, thank you to all the black captains. Thank you for all, all your work for throughout the whole year. I do appreciate it. I know sometimes uh, the weather cannot be so nice uh, for us when we hand out those newsletters. But uh, it, it is greatly appreciated. Thank you, Stan. Um, we definitely um, appreciate our blog captains. They are the face of the community. They actually make sure all the newsletters go out on time. And um, they are the ones that do all the footwork. So you are appreciated. Thank you for your hard work and dedication. And I hope you continuously support us as we um, continue to push forward. Um, now I will, I will let Kyle come up and do an update on our bylaws. So they wrote you in as well, huh? I wrote myself in. Hey everyone, I'll be brief. Just let you know that we're continuing the process of trying to update our bylaws and our board governance documents. Um, we are at the stage where we're finalizing our engagement letter with the uh, Latham and Watkins law firm that's gonna provide pro bono legal support to us that we secure through the DC Bar's pro bono center. So next steps will be that this week we will get back that engagement letter to them and then over the next few weeks and a couple of months while we're on the summer break, we'll be working with a committee from the community to come up with new draft bylaws and governance documents, which then in the, the session next fall we'll bring back to the, the entire community. Once we have a draft that's ready for voting, it's brought to the general membership and everyone has to have a say and also to vote before we accept any changes to the bylaws. Any questions? Uh, All right. Thank you very much. I'm being asked to check whether people have read the bylaws, the current bylaws that are on our website. I see some acknowledgement. Yeah. Some so they on the website? Yeah, they are on the website, yes. It's something we'll draw attention to as well once we get to the phase where we're looking at a new draft or compared to the old draft. Questions? Oh, you answered the question. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kyle. Thank you, Kyle. So now we'll have Tawana Banks come up and do the treasury report. Good evening, everyone. So what I have is the uh, treasury report. I pass it on the table for the end of month May, which was twenty uh, twenty two thousand six hundred forty nine dollars and forty one cents. During the end of the month of May, we had about what, six paying memberships were sold to $140. Mm -hmm. 
you all have a copy in front of you. Next, I want to talk a little bit about the um, Community Day that is going to take place on the 17th of August in the same location, the 3600 block of Texas Avenue between um, Nash, was Nash and Texas Avenue. Yeah. Yeah, Nash and Texas at one end and Carpenter and Texas at the other end. And thanks for the um, consensus. A lot of the, um, the members here in the community requested that we have a little more games for the adults this year. They've also requested that um, I bring back the two gentlemen that um, performed the Michael Jackson dance. And they want um, longer times with the uh, line dance group. Also, um, someone requested that we have a rain date. Well, we can't have a rain date because the police department nor the fire department is available in the month of September, nor the latter part of um, <coughs> August. So the next available time would be in October. Mr. Holt, um, Lance Holt is um, currently satisfying the permit request to have the block party at the 3600 block in Texas Avenue. And what I've also done, because um, it wasn't documented in the newsletter this time, so I went ahead and had some cards printed so that the community can contact me um, via email, the Penn Branch email, or my cell phone. Um, we're taking donations, but the donations will be sent to the addresses on the back, the Penn Branch Community P.O. Box number that's on the back of the card. And you also can give the donations to your block captain. And at the same time, we are um, we're in need of donations because um, we're currently having the yard sale in two weeks. So we have to take some of the funds from the um, account to support the yard sale. So if you can't support this um, event, it would be greatly appreciated. <clears throat> Thus far, we received $250 from Rappaport, uh, the real estate agency um, for the Penn Branch Shopping Center. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you, Tawana, for the Treasury Report and membership update and about our community day. Um, also, because um, Joan isn't here, um, as a reminder, uh, as Tawana stated, our yard sale will be um, on the 22nd um, it will be right out here in the parking lot if you are interested in selling anything or get rid of some old stuff like I am um, definitely let us know you can rent a table I know I'm excited I have some baby stuff to get rid of so if you know anybody that needs baby stuff uh, bassinet maybe uh, bottles blankets and so forth I'm gonna have the whole shebang out there um, but I'm sure you guys can do some spring cleaning as well. Oh, the one other thing she's looking for, tables. Um, she said there's not enough tables, so if you want to loan a table for the yard sale. So. Yes. Also, if you, want to, if you have some tables maybe in your garage or that you don't mind loaning for that day, um, people will just simply be putting their items on the table so that they can sell and market when people come and walk up. And I'm very excited because we have uh, some exciting people that will be there selling some baked goods. We'll actually have Rita's there as well. We um, haven't got a firm commitment yet, but we're hoping we'll actually have a food truck as well out there. So I think this is gonna be a fun-filled day, and I'm a flea market finder. I like those type of things. So um, I'm excited. I can't wait to uh, look for maybe some old bases, antiques, and so forth. That's my thing. So I'm excited. Please come out and support the community that day. Also, our community day is always exciting and eventful. That's in August. It will be August 18th. And that's like a block party of sorts. We also um, always have a lot of public agencies that come out and uh, bring different fun activities. I know last year the fire department had a, a humongous slide the kids couldn't get enough of. We actually had uh, face painting activities for the kids in the move bounds. 
Um, there were a lot of uh, fun-filled things for the adults to do. And, oh, our t-shirts, Tawana. I did the order form. They're on the table. So the order form for our Pen Branch t-shirts. Um, I don't know if you guys watched Zip Trip. And did you see the one in Easter Market? And I was like, oh, wouldn't that be nice to have Zip Trip come to Pen Branch next year? So me personally, I'm going to try to get them to come to our community next year. But if they do, we got to show up and we got to show out. Um, if you're not familiar with Zip Trip, uh, Fox 5 News, they do a tour through different communities and different neighborhoods. Last year they did Anacostia. This year they did uh, Eastern Market. Next year maybe we can get them to come to Pen Branch. So uh, definitely purchase your t-shirts. They come in adult sizes. We have kids sizes. The adults are 20. Kids what are 10? Yes. Yes. So uh, order your t-shirts so Community Day when people come they know that you're from this community and you can represent your community well. Okay now I'm going to let Jacqueline and just kind of give some finishing sentiment before we close out. Oh, you too. Okay. <clears throat> so I'll be real quick here. Um, for the communications, I want to thank you all for. Um, handing in stories related to the newsletter. Once again, I want to acknowledge Laverne Thomas and of course Ms. Paul um, for contributions related to the newsletter. Um, please continue to submit information. I know Rosemary submitted information about the upcoming golf scholarship um, event for um, uh, the organization that she works with. Um, I also know that there are a number of other folks that have um, organizations that they work with. I know there's a brother here that's been trying to get folks to understand about the swimming in Deanwood. Um, there's ongoing swimming, literally a free pool um, that's available for folks. Um, if you look on the back, um, Ward Infinity, uh, the folks at Sibley, we have a representative, you can raise your hand with Sibley. Um, they have an initiative, um, and the reason I mention them, one of the things we're attempting to do is to get a farmer's market. Um, one of their grant recipients is Market 7, an organization that promotes um, food uh, no. security no. within Ward 7. Um, we are working diligently to get the um, permit for the farmer's market. Um, unfortunately, we won't be able to do it for this summer. Um, so we're working with Jair Lynch and Company to get that permit. It'll be during the fall. I want to report back on that. Um, but the folks uh, at uh, Sibley provided many grants for Ward 7 and Ward 8 recipients to help bridge the health gap. Um, so I just wanted to recognize the work that they're doing because, once again, these are resources for all of you in our community. Um, with that, I'm going to turn it back over. Um, but please submit your articles for the newsletter. We want to highlight the good things that you all are doing in our community. Thank you. Just a, a couple of uh, announcements. We have a representative from Mayor, uh, or not Mayor, excuse me, uh, Council Member Gray's office, uh, Mark Ponder. He's the constituent services liaison. Is he still here? Mark wanted to take a couple of moments to just um, share with you about what he does and, and how he can be engaging, uh, how he will be engaging with the community. Uh, my name is Mark Ponder. I'm the newest member of Council Member Gray's constituent service team. Um, I just started not long ago, and I'll tell you a little bit about myself. Um, I'm a second generation of uh, Okay, my name is Mark Ponder, and I'm the newest member of Council Member Gray's Constituent Service Team. Uh, I'll be working closely with D.L. Humphrey and Cedric Muhammad. Um, a little bit about myself, I'm a second generation Washingtonian. Um, I grew up here in the city. I formerly worked for Council Member Jim Graham as his constituent services specialist. 
so I have a vast amount of experience in dealing with the community. Um, I hope to be working with you all here as I have in uh, other places. Um, I also want to mention a little bit about the budget here that the council member and his colleagues have worked on very hard to reverse some of the mass decisions in the budget. Um, I'm, for the sake of time, I'm not going to go into it, but we have um, the papers, the leaflets, the flyers on the back. So you can see some of the things that he has worked on hard. On the front is some things about Ward 7 that they have reversed from the mayor's decision. And on the back of it is the citywide some of the things that they have reversed. These things took effect on the 28th of May. And thank you so much. That's about it. Thank you. Thank you. Your, 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 your um, phone number, oh, yes, email address. Please. Okay. I'm sorry. Please. Um, yeah. If any, I have cards also. So if anyone would like my information, please see me after. Yeah. Thank you. Just a, another moment before we uh, uh, take advantage of uh, all the refreshments we have in the back of the room. I just wanted to bring attention to all of the uh, services and and. Um, uh, programs and, and such that we have within our neighborhood over the summer. We won't be meeting, of course, in, in uh, July or August, but our neighborhood library is still going to be here. The Fort DuPont uh, uh, ice skating rink is going to be here, and all these other um, uh, programs, as Elson was saying, the, the pool is going to be here. So please, take advantage of all, all that's being offered within our neighborhood. Uh, the library, you've got chess, you've got yoga, we've got um, the, the, the kids reading programs. We've got programs for, for the seniors, for adults. Um, um, my granddaughter asked me yesterday, Leanna, um, when am I going to learn how to swim? So I'm glad you reminded me that we have this pool within our own neighborhood that we can, that we can take our kids to learn how to swim for free. So um, if there's any programs or any information or speakers that you want to see us bring in the, the next um, in the next administration year, please let us know. Over the summer, the board and the executive board is going to be meeting and, and uh, kind of brainstorming on uh, different, various, interesting things that we can, we can do to keep the community enlightened. So please reach out and let us know. Contact the block captains, contact the board members, and um, uh, we can keep everyone informed. Ms. Paul? Mine's really, really quick. <laughs> yeah, right. Next year is the 20th anniversary of the September 11th event that occurred in our great nation. And as for the new neighbors, we do have a 911 Memorial Park. It is part of our gateway. It's located at Carpenter and O. We have a detailed article in the newsletter telling you that we heard what the young people wanted us to do with the summer cleanup which was to let people go to do what they wanted to contribute to, to that. And if you drive slowly, you'll see someone has trimmed back the hedge line. Someone has trimmed back the roses. Uh, I contributed um, a combination that I got from USDA to kill the weed. So we want to continue this throughout the entire month of June. Just give us a call. I can meet you there if you're, you're concerned that you might hurt a plant or not. But one of the critical things that we are trying to prep this garden for is going after a grant in the fall to fully enhance the walkways so that they are paved. We do not want the potential foundation to visit with us at the park and all you see is weeds. Let's show them we, are, we really appreciate that Gateway Park. In fact, Mr. Hammond started me on this journey. Yes, you did. He used to be the first director of Urban Forest, what became Urban Forest Administration in DDI. He gave me the first grant. That's why the Gateway sign says Urban Forest Council. So we have kept it up, and if he was still there, he would give me 
a bigger grant, but he's no longer the person in charge of that grant, but there's someone else that can give us an additional grant to put pavers, to take down the old flagpole and put up a double flagpole, but we got to do our part. So call me if you want to go down there. I can walk you through it and say, hey, do this or do that. But the most important thing to do is as you spray your yard and have some extra weed killer, go kill the weed in the past. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Paul. Okay, so now I'm going to let the RISE Demonstration Center representative come up and speak with you guys shortly. Yes. David Thompson. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. My name is David Thompson. I'm working at Sibley Hospital, and I'll be very brief. The gentleman at the end here is basically give you a, a, a great overview. The bottom line is this. Uh, I'll cover these points very quickly. Sibley is basically awarded thirty thousand. They've awarded thirty thousand dollars. Okay, thirty thousand dollars to Ward Seven and Ward Eight residents. Basically, what they call social innovation programs. These are health programs, right? So they're. Flyers I'll pass out to you shows that people got these awards. The awards are basically in three areas. Access to healthy food, improving housing options, and using technology to improve health literacy. These are all very, very key because as we all know, your wealth is your health. So that's what this program is all about. On the 27th of this month, over at the Ride Center, 6 p.m., Somebody's going to be there. We'll be there to host what they call a Ward Infinity Town Hall meeting, where you can ask questions. You can find out about some of you getting some of this grant money that's out there that they're awarding. So I'm not going to go too much more into it, but there's money there for innovative programs. Please come to the meeting to find out more. Again, it's for housing, Mommy. access to healthy food, Mommy. and using technology to improve Mommy. health literacy. Everything that everybody in this room needs. We all need. I'll pass flyers out. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming to speak to our community. Um, any other announcements? Um, Jim? Real quick. So, just want to let you know the Washington Literacy Center, Ward 7 has the highest literacy rates. Uh, in the city, um, we rank number one. So the Washington Literacy Center is going to have at Soul Cycle. I don't know how many. How many of you have heard of Soul Cycle? So Soul Cycle is uh, basically stationary riding, but it's the music. It's in the dark. Uh, but another way to do it. But we're having a fundraiser on June 21st. Uh, it's going to be Soul Cycle on U Street. Uh, we'll send it around. But the purpose is to benefit uh, the Washington Literacy Center. And stay tuned because there will be more news about what we'll be doing in Ward 7. Also, So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jimmy. So, um, any other further announcements or anything anybody else wanted to share with the community before we close out? I'm sorry, I have a question about, has anybody took into the fact of 5G? Sorry, has anybody took into the account of 5G and the negative health effects that it has in the neighborhood? And how they're not the same as the Oh, we, we, we are aware of them, and we, yes, we are aware of them, and we have made sure that proper notification is given, given to all communities throughout the city, not just Ward 7. We provided at last month's meeting the guidelines that have been approved by EPA that shows you as a citizen what you should look for if they don't put in the 5G satellite dishes in the proper places. So yes, we have focused on that. Thank you. If you go to your public library, and go to www.ddoe because they are the overseers for that new guideline and law. And just in their search box, type 5G guidelines. And it's a 12 page document. Thank you. Thank you. 
about our neighbor on 35th and Carpenter that was being cared for, I think, by his son. And there are often police cars there, like 20 or 30 police cars that come. His, his son is now uh, in jail thanks to MPD. Okay. Uh, he has a restraining order. And thanks to his block captain, his black captain is working with him. You'll notice now that there is a sign saying they're getting ready to replace the windows. DPW has come out and helped him to clear everything. So we're hoping that with the stay away order and his continued working with his black captain, that things are going to be okay. That's Mr. Ford. That's our neighbor, Mr. Ford, at the corner of Carpenter and 35th. Thank you. And Is there a contact person relating to the uh, golf event? Yeah, Rosemary. Right 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 it's on there. It's on there. I tried the, I tried the website and I was unsuccessful in registering. Oh, okay. I'll send. I'll stop at my house. I'll give you her phone number. Okay. Yes, okay. she knows. I'll buy her phone number. She'll be right around the corner. Shannon. Yes, Robin. Was that a concern you have the golf tournament? Yes. Yeah, I tried to access that information as well. I, I couldn't either. So, somebody have the information? Rosemary, I'll send you Robin and he'll come find my house. Rosemary Crockett is the person coordinated. She's our block captain. And I think our block captain, this is on the website, isn't it? Yes. If you, if you go to the web, our website, you can pick up. Or you can give them stand information and stand can yeah. let them know who their local yeah. black captain is. Hey, Robin, I've been in contact with Rosemary. Uh, I'm going to get both your numbers and yes. I'll give them to her. Oh, yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So before we wrap up and um, close out um, until September, I first want to thank my executive board and uh, my different, um, well, my committees that have supported me throughout this year. This was a very eventful journey, um, but nonetheless, we survived and we got through, and I'm very happy that, okay, you up. This is my first call, sorry. Um, <laughs> But um, I want to thank Stan for being very dedicated, uh, for being our captain captain of our block captains. So please give him a hand. Oh, please. I want to thank uh, our parliamentary, Laverne Thomas, for supporting us on our board as well, and doing our newsletter and keeping the community updated with information. I want to thank Mrs. Alberta Pauls for keeping us up to date with all the informational stuff with DPW and everything that you can think of in the, in the community. She is the heir to the streets for real. I want to thank Jimmy Williams for being a supportive past president and guiding me through this whole process. So thank you, Jimmy. Nelson Nash for his hard work on trying to get us a market within our community and I believe that it's going to happen. So just keep pressing forward. Thank you for keeping your momentum going with that. I want to thank Tawana Banks for keeping us up to date and uh, with our community day which is a phenomenal event that we all love and it's, it keeps growing every year and also being our treasurer. Thank you Tawana. Give her a hand. I also want to thank Kyle uh, for his bike initiative and uh, DDOP initiative really working hard on our bylaws and we have been driving him crazy with our minutes and so forth because we're chatty caddies. <laughs> so <laughs> um, our, our minutes are usually probably six pages for him but he never complains and he does it and he's very effective and he gets it to us fast. So thank you Kyle. I want to thank my bike VP, Hi. my backbone, 
my yin to my yang, my peace and my storm, <laughs> Jacqueline Cannon. Um, I don't know how it happened, but we, we're we just a perfect mix. She's like my husband for real. So um, just thank you for supporting me through this whole process. And um, I'm just glad that you and I are like-minded in the sense that we just keep continuously being positive and just being on the up and up and I can think that all day. So, um, and thank you for the community just being patient with us. Um, you know, we, we had a hard act to follow. <laughs> so we had some major shoes to fill, but nonetheless, we're here and we're a thriving community and we're gonna continuously keep pressing forward and I have built relationships with beautiful people in this community. And I mean, it's just heartwarming to know where my grandparents put their foot in the mud here in this community that their legacy lives on through me. So thank you, I love you guys. Have some cake in the back. And I can't wait to see you at our yard sale and our community day. So be blessed, enjoy the rest of your summer and see you in the fall. Thank you. Thank you. President Janet Thomas for her leadership and got us through this, uh, this this first year of our administration. We look forward to um, the year two and um, improving as we go along and, and getting to know even more neighbors and getting more neighbors in the room for, for our future events. So, Shannon, thank you. We look forward to working with you again. We appreciate it. You know me, I don't need any accolades. I do it because I really love it, so thank you. <laughs>